how Microsoft Education Solution has designed to support students in the school? Um, so yeah, to answer the question, I think the, uh, the important thing to understand here is that Microsoft as a platform provider has been thinking about education for a long time. And with the advance of the cloud and the devices coming together, we have now taken a very uh, you know, deliberate uh, attempt also to make sure that our solutions are designed from the ground up for education. So it doesn't become an after the uh, fact thought about thinking about education. So if you look at the uh, capabilities of Microsoft 365 for education, it, it's right in the name of the product. It is Microsoft 365 designed for education. So Teams as an example is designed for education. Minecraft as an example is designed as a gamification for education. Uh, all the capabilities in PowerPoint, Word, Excel, and other tools also cater towards the content creation. So during my session earlier today, I mentioned the fact that, you know, we are focused on creating uh, users who are, or students who are ready for the workforce. And as part of becoming ready for the workforce, they need to know the tools that are going to enable them to be employable. They need to gain the skills using those tools. And that's another reason why a lot of schools who have gone and chosen other platforms in the past who have you know, looked at tools like Zoom or WhatsApp or Google are really rethinking a consolidation strategy towards Microsoft because we do provide the entire platform that is extensible, a platform that we keep on innovating on top of, but also our partner ecosystem innovates on top of. Uh, as examples like our, our hardware OEMs innovate on top of our, our, our ecosystem as well. Uh, along with our ISV partners. So I think it gives a very comprehensive solution set, a uh, platform and capabilities that are very specifically designed for education. So happy to connect with uh, anyone who has one-on-one uh, -on -one questions about that to kind of go into detail. But uh, I think for now, that's, that's what I wanted to say. Thanks. Uh, along with our ISV partners. So I think it gives a very comprehensive solution set, a uh, platform and capabilities that are very specifically designed for education. So. Happy to. So I think it gives a very comprehensive solution set. Now we'll move on to the second question. With a changing education landscape, schools are relying on technology in unprecedented ways. How Microsoft support by bridging the gap in the skill sets? Now we'll move on to the second question. With a changing education landscape, schools are relying on technology in unprecedented ways. How Microsoft support by bridging the gap in the skill sets? Yeah, so that's a great question. I think there's two angles to this, uh, you know, readiness perspective. So one is how do we make sure our educators are ready to make sure that they know how to use the tool sets in a, in a way that is uh, useful for them to use during their day-to-day -day, uh, teaching and learning experience, which basically means we want to not just teach the users or the educators, the teachers, how to use PowerPoint or how to use Excel or Word but actually use all of these tools in a context of teaching and learning. So for example, we have a course called Microsoft Certified Educator, which basically teaches our teachers how to design their lesson plans, how to design content to accommodate the new hybrid teaching and learning uh, you know, process, tool sets and mechanisms of pedagogy as it's known as. So it does, we do focus on not just giving you the tools, but also giving you the guidance on using the tools in a meaningful way. The second area of focus for us is also making sure that now that we are introducing technology, we need to enable and empower the IT pros or the IT administrators who are looking after this infrastructure to make sure that that experience of deploying this technology is easy, simple, safe, compliant and, and is completely adheres to the privacy requirements for education. Because one of the things that we've been working with countries across the world, and you know, the co most common question about introducing technology into education is how secure is it? How, how, how does Microsoft think about privacy? 
and and you know the, the great, great great news here is that you know Microsoft's uh, platform has been designed with privacy and trust in mind, so that we don't you know harvest any user information here or create any ads or any, any kind of other mechanisms of monetizing that particular user. So it does create for a lot more of a trusted conversation and a partnership between Microsoft and the education institution. So that those are two areas. So just to recap, one is, you know, how do we enable educators through, uh, you know, certifications like the Microsoft Certified Educator? And the second is empowering our IT pros through platforms like Microsoft Learn so that they can actually learn how to use and deploy this technology in a meaningful way. Thank you. our planet, how Ingram and Microsoft will bring difference for the Indian partner ecosystem? Can I repeat the question? Or our yeah. planet, how Ingram and Microsoft will bring difference for the Indian partner ecosystem? Yeah, I think that's a that's another good question because I think as as everyone knows, Microsoft is a heavily partner driven organization. All the work I do and in my in my role is partner led. So there isn't a, there isn't anything that we do that that doesn't involve a partner at some stage. Right from you know helping us make and shape the market uh, together with partners like Ingram, so that we can create uh, a. Uh, understanding and awareness for our, our solutions and our platform through to executing the actual deals and then also through our global training partners, enabling the teacher, uh, you know, uh, professional development as well as IT pro professional development through that. So there is a partner at every stage of the conversation here. So I think there is opportunities for us to really have a dialogue with you to think about areas of engagement with your particular organization and the you know, the IP that you bring as an ISV or as a, as a training partner or as a deployment partner. There are many opportunities for the partner ecosystem to get involved uh, along with our distribution partner with like like in work. So there's, a, there's quite a few opportunities there, I believe. Thank you. We'll move to the next question. What are the solutions designed by Microsoft and Ingram to empower wars and partners in the country. We'll move to the next question. What are the solutions designed by Microsoft and Ingram to empower wars and partners in the country? Yeah, I can't speak on behalf of Ingram, but I can definitely talk on behalf of Microsoft. As, as I mentioned earlier, the programs we have created for our partners include our ISV program, our co-sell uh, partner programs, to make sure that we are also promoting local content, local ISVs, local LMS, local SIS providers. And that's yet another opportunity for us to think holistically about the solution. And of course, we'll work along with our OEM partners to make sure that we position the right device into the conversation, uh, be it from K to 12 or into higher education, it doesn't really matter. The story really has a continuum from kindergarten to secondary to uh, tertiary education. So I think there's opportunities for us to think about partnerships that are meaningful, partnerships that create opportunity for all of us, because the ecosystem is really you know, a very unique opportunity with Microsoft in the way that we are taking our solutions to market which differentiates us from other, you know, key industry players, and also, uh, it, you know, empowers us to also engage local content creators, local, uh, you know, uh, ISVs, uh, as well as, uh, you know, uh, engage with uh, with people where where there are partners who create content in particular languages, for example, for India. So there are many many aspects that I think there is a lot of gaps that our platform. As we continue to say, we are a platform, we are not the end solution. And therefore, there is opportunity for every partner to come in and play at different aspects of the deal. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to get excited at today's uh, today's event to see how we can engage on, 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 uh, on different aspects. 
And also, yes, we have developed a edu book, a e-book with Ingram, uh, that, that has been created with this partner enablement in mind. So I partnered with the DPSS team in, in India, as well as the Ingram team, uh, to actually create an edu book. So I strongly encourage all of you to you know, visit the edu book site that I'm sure you'll be given a link to. And uh, you know, that will give you an idea of how to also pitch this posi uh, and position this solution to your end user. So when you're having a conversation with the end user, you can refer to, we've designed the ebook in such a way that you can then guide the customer through the entire conversation as I have done today during our demo session today. Maybe, uh, Amit, there is a good question for you. As today is a holiday in Singapore, uh, you know, thanks for joining. The question to you is, uh, what are the customer challenges you have noticed that uh, Windows 11 SE is going to address the challenges? Uh, Amit, there is a good question for you. As today is a holiday in Singapore, uh, you know, thanks for joining. The question to you is, uh, what are the customer challenges you have noticed that uh, Windows 11 SE is going to address the challenges? Uh, yeah, that's a great question, and, and, and I'm, I, I appreciate everyone being patient with me as I'm dealing with a very difficult situation in the mall at the moment uh, as I'm talking to you. So really appreciate everyone's uh, you know patience with me. But also, I'm excited to be part of these conversations with our partner ecosystem. Um, and I hope to visit India very soon, uh, both, both professionally and personally, to be with all of you as well, so that I can uh, you know be with you together. Uh, but to answer the question about 11 SE specifically, as I said during my demo, there has been a gap in the market with what 11 Pro was providing. 11 Pro, as you know, has been designed with professionals in mind, which fits a lot of the higher education or the secondary education needs. So there was a need to address a simple to deploy, easy to manage, and easy to, you know, easy to, uh, you know, uh, replace if needed uh, device. Which basically means that you know in the past customers have had very little choice but to go to you know our competitors. So now what we are doing is we're giving them a continuum to say 11 SE is a great op, you know great starting device for kindergarten to eight. Beyond eight, as you go into nine to twelve, and then beyond twelve into higher education, the needs of the user are going to be a lot more sophisticated. So they will need more sophisticated apps. But in the K-8 space uh, is where 11 SE is trying to fit in. We are providing those applications that are a must have for education. For example, out of the box, you're going to get the office applications installed on 11 SE. Second, out of the box, the device will be managed using Intune because uh, we can't expect a kindergarten to eight student to really know how to manage and maintain this device, to do things like Windows update, to do maintenance from a security perspective and knowing you know what is a harmful site to go to or what is a harmful application to install on the device because they, they haven't gone got to that level of sophistication in their user experience um, so that's that's the reasoning and that's the thinking behind 11 se is to make sure that we give you a cloud managed experience so there is as you would you know expect any k-8 to experience to have duty of care so the security is paramount, privacy is paramount. All of those things have been taken into account when we designed 11 c and the devices around that. And the other reason for that is also to make sure that we hit a low entry level price point. As, as more sophisticated technology gets available, it obviously it has impact on price. So to give K to eight an experience that will you know, enable you to have a device that is accessible to many people, and the other reason is, you know, is 11 SE going to be the, the cheapest device on the planet? No. The, the aim is to provide a, a curated experience that is going to make sure that it, it creates a content creation environment for our end users. The aim of 11 SE devices will also be to move away from the conversation of consumption devices to content creation devices at an entry price point, which is very competitive what, what Customers have expected in the past from our uh, from other players in the industry, so that there is a there's a clear reason why 11 SE was designed and and will continue to evolve. So this is the first iteration of what you've seen with 11 SE. As you've seen 11 Pro uh, evolve over time, 
Uh, you'll also see 11SE evolve over time to have additional capabilities being added to it in this uh, subsequent releases as well. So yeah, that's that's kind of a bit of a long answer, but I, I really appreciate everyone's time today in in, uh, in attending this session. I know you're you're all in in person there. I wish I was there in person with you, but I hope to do that soon. Thank you. Amit, there is a very interesting question has come up. What are the key challenges you face uh, when you have the K8 implementation? K8 customer challenges. Thus, uh, the window SE has been designed. I'll repeat the question. Yeah. What are the very interesting question has come up. What are the key challenges you face uh, when you have the K8 implementation? Sorry, could you repeat the last part of that question? I will repeat. Uh, what are the key challenges you uh, K8 customers faced to address the the challenges? Key people? challenges you yeah. face uh, when you have the K8 implementation. Oh, paid implementation? Oh, so no, the, the paid implementation uh, comes down to the value proposition that customers are looking for. Yes. The, 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 the unfortunate reality is that you know a lot of uh, a lot of the industry players make the base platform available for free, so customers are used to going and getting what is available. However, when it comes to you know data analytics and actually meaningfully knowing the impact of using technology in the in the education systems, that's where analytics, that's where a lot of the more sophisticated capabilities in the platform start to shine. And those are not, I mean, let's be honest, both Microsoft and other industry players out there are, are commercial organizations that have fiscal responsibilities to our uh, shareholders as well. So those opportunities are not going to be able, uh, those capabilities can be run for free. So there are base platform capabilities that we will provide out of the box, like the like players like Google will play pay. Uh, will, will provide out of the box for free, but beyond the point, the, the, the sheer cost of goods and services to run the cloud services and at a scale that education expects us to run it at, does not afford us the ability to provide all services for free. Uh, so there is an opportunity to also monetize different aspects of the platform, uh, specifically around the advanced capabilities like device management, like on, online offline apps that are fully capable of software that is available on the device. All those are opportunities for us to monetize the monetize the device and monetize the services that are provided on top of the device. So it's a it's a very logical conversation and we like to have a more fact-based conversation with our customers rather than making this a you know yes uh, you know what what does Microsoft provide for free, what does Zoom provide for free, what does Google provide for free. Uh, there is a point in time when you know a lot of things can be done for free, but at the end of the day, the value you extract out of the platform is only when you start seeing data analytics and other capabilities that do require us to, you know, uh, charge for those services as well. So yeah, I hope that that gives you a bit of an understanding. So we would like to take this as an opportunity to engage customers and and partner with them on that journey. Most customers do start with a free implementation. Don't get me wrong, I, I know exactly what happens with customers going to a Zoom or a Google or a Microsoft and expecting that, but there is a limit to what can be done with that. And, and beyond, it, beyond the point, as the customer's use of the technology matures, their need to move towards uh, different uh, SKUs and different capabilities that our platform provides it also evolves. And would be happy to have a conversation with you guys in, in one on ones or or even on a licensing conversation as to how we have designed licensing to accommodate those needs for education as well. Hey, Amit, uh, we have two more questions. The challenges for today's education are greater than ever. How Microsoft is bridging the gap? Uh, Amit, uh, we have two more questions. Yeah, sure, sure. Just for today's education are greater than ever. How Microsoft is bridging the gap? Yeah, so the bridging the gap, as I said earlier, the first thing is, you know, you start with an experience that enables you to bring together the device and the cloud together using, you know, Office 365 A1, which is our free SKU. 
that really gets everyone interested in the conversation that gets everybody interested in making sure that the educators learn to use our platform and then over time you know uh, making sure that the educators get themselves educated on using the platform for teaching and learning is a skill by itself so the way i look at it is you know we, we provide you the different parts uh, of the recipe but we are not putting everything together for you we give you the guidance on how to cook the dish so we provide you the training we provide you the tool the educators to actually be motivated and to bring them together in a community. So that we have even created a, a community which is called the Microsoft Innovative Educator Community. And we uh, encourage people through badging, giving them recognition at worldwide events by giving educators incentives to share their best practices. We are also creating uh, programs like uh, the Microsoft Showcase Schools, where you know schools who are doing really well with our platforms can showcase Sorry, you may have lost my audio there for a second. Are you there, Amit? Amit, are you there? There is some network issue, I think. Can you move on to the last question, Amit? Can you hear me again? Yeah, sorry, I was, I was on mute. Yeah, and I, as I was saying before I got cut off, uh, you know, Showcase Schools is a great example of how we are encouraging schools to also demonstrate their use of our technology in a meaningful way in, 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 their, in their school and creates an opportunity for other schools to also learn from our showcase school. So there are many programs that we make available. So that's a way we are bridging the gap from a technology perspective, from an educator professional development perspective, IT pro professional development perspective. That really creates an environment where everyone wants to use technology for this new hybrid world of teaching and learning as well. Amit, uh, we'll move to the last question. Let me know if you have, uh, need any clarification on any points as I did get cut off. Yeah, we'll, we'll take uh, the last question. A new era of digital learning we're talking about, but Microsoft is talking about uh, hybrid learning. How this is uh, simple to deploy, manage, and secure? Uh, the last question. A new era of digital learning we're talking about, but Microsoft is talking about uh, hybrid learning. How this is uh, simple to deploy, manage, and secure? So I'll take over for Ramit right now. Uh, I think he's having some network issues. My name is Nishay. So I'm a colleague of Amit. So what we usually have uh, for uh, this particular uh, hybrid learning, so there is a very precise thought that has gone behind that because uh, what we understand, it's not going to be uh, per se the virtual learning or the physical classrooms only. We will have a mixture of your hybrid classrooms where you will be learning physically with the help of devices. And this is where a lot of challenges comes into play. In fact, in India, probably if you do an internet search, you will find out that we have uh, we are not very much uh, focused on the secu security part. The most common uh, passwords that we have, in fact, the top one that Indians use is password, along with admin, uh, I love you one two three and all those things. 
So how do we ensure that the, de uh, the devices we are using in the uh, ecosystem, in the education ecosystem, how we are giving it to the students for learning, they are working simultaneously. They are working in a way that is meant for them to enhance the learning part. That is the aspect ratio of it. Uh, this is where the hybrid learning comes into play. So uh, as Amit has spoken about the kind of foundational services we are offering in. So if you remember, device is at the center of it. And, and uh, then with those devices, we tend to provide a lot of foundational services which help the IT teams and other uh, things that can be working simultaneously, concurrently with the services, with the devices to the users. One of the important things of working in hybrid education, hybrid learning is uh, that one thing that we all have to understand is security, uh, other services are complementary to the learning. The core has to be learning. And this is where we need to understand that couple of information that we want to give in terms of devices, in terms of the education part, the portfolio, everything has to be focused and centered on learning. And that's where the security services, the, the manageability, the remote manageability comes into play when we talk about the hybrid learning. So uh, when you talk about uh, uh, learning, learning in future is definitely going to change. In fact, uh, it began before the uh, pandemic itself. And India being the ed tech center, we will see that it is going to come back. Uh, I am not sure if Amit is here, he can make a point to it. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm back. So I just finished it. Thanks for covering while I was getting some network issues here. Uh, no, you're absolutely right. So the, the opportunity really is to think holistically, as you just explained, from the device being at the center to making sure we provide a, a, a safe, secure, private environment for our education institution. A lot of things that have happened during the pandemic, people relied on whatever they could get their hands on. In some cases, public services. In some cases, they were well-managed, well-secure services. So opportunity really is now to evolve the conversation because it's no longer about explaining why technology is important. It is now the point to actually explain how technology is important and how it fits in with the aspirations for the next evolution of education in the hybrid teaching and learning world. I mean, I, I, I speak about this in this context of how banking or you know FinTech or any other industry has had its evolution, right? from being a physical environment where people used to have to go to a bank. I'm sure very few of us who are now digitally banking very rarely will visit a bank. There will be a point in time where there will be a lot of reliance on hybrid teaching and learning that needs to be accommodated. I'm not saying that it will be the same as banking in education. I think there will be a space and a uh, you know, place for people to actually go and visit the school and, and be part of that community and feel that engagement with people but also a lot of it will be accessible online, will be accessible through applications where we are engaging and collaborating with each other. And, and you've probably also seen the evolution of that conversation already taking place, where people are talking about metaverse and other things, which is the next step of evolution. So if we are to keep ourselves competitive, if we are to keep our you know, students ready for the, you know, the world today, but also get them ready for the world tomorrow, we really need to start with the right device conversation, the right content creation conversation, the right, you know, how do we use this technology to really change the skill sets that our students need? Because I'll, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm a product of that, you know, evolution in, in the way that I learned. I went to school in India, then I, you know, I happened to migrate to Australia and then to Singapore. But over time, it was the ability to learn, adapt, and you know, analyze and use our skills in a meaningful way that evolve with the needs of the industry, that really makes us, you know, uh, really drive towards success for ourselves and, you know, for our family and therefore our country as well. So I think there's a lot of conversation that needs to happen both from a pedagogy perspective, but also from a technology perspective that goes hand in hand in this particular conversation. To thank Amit and uh, Nichal for joining the Q and A session, and this is the I would That's say okay. uh, the real hybrid event. Thank you so very much, so friends joining over the online and physical saying. Now we will go to the physical mode. Uh, over to Usma. Thank you very much.